I usually don't do this, but I had to. There was no way I wasn't gonna touch on this. Hey, my friend, welcome back to another edition of the Building Faith Podcast, where it is my hope to bring you biblical solutions to life's tough challenges. So, hey, if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button. I see it all the time. People that I minister to, I see it in my YouTube comments. People are misled. And true God-fearing people who are like sheep led to a slaughter simply because they're believing false teachings. And it is such a frustration of mine that I recently did a video about the four false teachings that I used to believe until I came to my senses. And just a few days after that video launched, I saw this book by Alan Parr and I had to get my hands on it. It's called Misled, Seven Lies That Distort the Gospel. I had to read it. I wanted to see for myself if Alan was grounded in scripture or just another false teacher teaching about false teachings. And what I found surprised me. For starters, if you don't know Alan, he's a Bible teacher with a massive following on YouTube, but there's also quite a few concerns about his doctrine. In fact, several people have boldly called him a heretic. So I had to see for myself. Now. I'm not saying that we need to put God somewhere in the middle or that you need to be balanced. What I am saying is that I want to learn from teachers that are not only passionate about our Lord, but true to the text. So the question is, did I find that in Alan's book? Before I dive into what I liked and what I didn't like, I want to say that I wanted to go into this book with eyes wide open. Now, I don't expect to agree with every teacher on everything, but as long as we stand together on the essentials, I can call you brother. Now, you may be saying to me, Chris, what do you mean essentials? There are essentials of the Christian faith. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ would be an essential. We don't agree on this? Well, I was what to say. <laughs> but there are other things that we call non-essentials. And these things would be like speaking in tongues, Christians having demons, modern music, being slain in the spirit, things like that. And these are non-essentials. And these non-essentials are not supposed to cause division in the body of Christ, but they do. And I see it firsthand a lot. Just check my YouTube comments and you will see the negative, nasty comments that are coming from supposed Christ followers simply because they don't agree with something I or another viewer says. So I've had enough exposure to Alan to confidently say that I can call him brother, but can I recommend his book? Hmm. Now, full transparency, I've had conversations with Alan and he's even been a guest on this channel. And while we don't align perfectly on every issue, we do on most and certainly on the essentials. So I got myself the audio and the Kindle version. Look, I love books, but I hate clutter. And the number of books I read would definitely turn into clutter. So with my AirPods ready, I dove in. And what I found surprised me. You see, I had a feeling it was gonna be good, but what I didn't expect was how much I actually enjoyed it. I listen to a lot of books. Now, some because I have to, others I end up quitting after a few grueling chapters, and others I just take every chance I can get to listen to. And this was one of those books. Straight to the point, right out of the gate. I love that. And while we have some very talented writers in the Christian community, I personally have a hard time reading fluffy stories loaded down with adjectives and superlatives and descriptions that take two pages to get the point across. I'm a direct kind of gal, and this book grabbed me from the start. Now, I'm not saying that it was at all didactic or statistical, not at all. The first story Alan opened up with actually shocked me, and I was almost in tears. But as I continued to listen, he broke down each false teaching one by one with a depth I didn't expect. So I wanna take a moment to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like, and if I'd actually recommend that you read this book. So what did I like? First off, it was an easy read. I gobbled this book up in two bike rides and a paint job, but 
I didn't expect to have to stop a few times just to take some notes. And I like when an author gives you cause for pause. The second thing I liked, Alan gave a good biblical defense to each of the false teachings that he exposed. And while he shares his experience, it's not the basis for his theology. And I see too many people today contradict scripture with their experiences. And because their experiences are so real, they sooner question scripture rather than they would their experience. And my friend, we should never let scripture take a back seat to our feelings, our expectations, or our experiences. And the next thing I really liked about Misled was how he not only called out the false teachings, but some of the teachers that promote it. And some of these teachers need to be exposed as their teachings are gaining ground because of their popularity. But these types of Christians that are attracted to these messages, they're, well, they're carnal, they're immature Christians that can be easily swayed, especially if they're not the type that actually check scripture for themselves. And we need to know these false teachers and the sly, subtle nuances they use to distort the gospel of Jesus. Look, Alan didn't dance around this. He just simply called out the truth. Now, I especially loved the chapter about progressive Christianity, which is a pervasive problem within our churches. And if you're not familiar with progressive Christianity, this book is worth it just for that chapter alone. Now, I also found the audiobook had some good narration. And if you're an audio lover like me, you know how important that is. It was expressive but even keeled. Now, I loved and appreciated the entire book, but I really appreciated the last chapter. And I also like that he discussed what a genuine growing relationship with Jesus looks like, answering some key questions that are confusing the body of Christ today, like, can I lose my salvation? And is that person really saved? And we discuss this often on this channel when it comes to narcissists. And I believe that this book is going to help break down biblical traits of a true believer. So you can begin to answer that question for yourself. All of this was communicated in a non-judgmental, but biblically firm manner. In fact, you could almost feel Alan's undeniable desire to stay true to the uncompromising word of God. So, all right, enough sunshine and kittens. Uh, what didn't I like? I got to admit, I was surprised there really wasn't much. Um, so if I'm reaching, I would say there were there were a few chapters that made me think, huh, where's he going with this? But then he always came through with sound biblical backing. I personally think I would have liked some more stories, some more kind of pulling me in. Look, it was very educational, but I would like to have connected with Jaron, the main character, just a little bit more, but who knows? Maybe that would have made the book too long. Just my opinion. Look, he did make a few points uh, to backing up his teaching on eternal security. Not that I disagree with uh, eternal security for the true believer, but he made reference to how a slave once free would never want to go back. And I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, we see prisoners wanting to go back to prison all the time. And, and the Israelites are a prime example of those who were set free, but frequently looked to go back into bondage. Yeah, so I didn't necessarily agree with those examples, but was not a deterrent from enjoying the book at all. So the question is, would I recommend this book? Absolutely. I believe that this book is going to be a game changer for so many Christians. So yes, you do need to get your hands on, or in my case, your ears in this book. It is going to bring a lot of clarity. And if you do want to check it out, I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. And whether you listen or whether you read, whether you agree or you don't, your theology will be challenged in a good way with sound biblical teaching and a no-nonsense approach. And if you know me, you know I love no-nonsense. 
And if you want to know the four false teachings that I used to believe until I came to my senses, go ahead and check out this episode right here. And if you are struggling in your faith or you want to grow in your faith, I want to invite you to grab a copy of our free five-day Mountain Moving Faith devotional. This is my free gift to you, my friend. I will go ahead and include a link in the description section below.